fabulous people, welcome to Rome and welcome to the third part of Hidden Gems of Rome. If you're looking for things to do in Rome that are so unique that most people have never heard of before, then this Rome travel guide is definitely for you. Today I'll share what to do in Rome no matter if you're traveling to Italy for the first or the hundredth time. Now guys, before we begin, please remember to smack that like button and if you're new to my channel and my vibe and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, please consider subscribing. Alright, let's start exploring. I'm going to begin this Rome guide with one of my absolute favorite Rome attractions, which is Doria Pamphile Gallery. How this place is not yet crowded with tourists and booked far in advance is beyond my comprehension. Dating back to the 16th century, Palazzo Doria Pamphili is a true blend of art and history of some of the most important noble families in Italy. From Doria Pamphili families and Colonna to Borghese, Savoia families and many more. The palace is the result of 500 years of expansion and additions which created this one-of-a-kind centuries-old splendor that you can visit today. Wow guys, you think you've seen it all and then you come to a place like this one and realize that you just discovered another hidden gem of Rome. Originally the palace was built for the Pamphile family, but after the family had no heir in the 18th century, Pope Clement XII gave the property to the Doria family. Several generations of this family were huge art lovers, therefore this entire palace is full of masterpieces by Raphael, Caravaggio, Titian, Lorenzo Lotto and others. Wow guys, every single room is so stunning and it's filled with so many precious pieces to explore and admire. Wow! The collection also includes the famous portrait of Pope Innocent X, a member of the Doria Pamphile family, by Diego Velasquez. The private collection of Doria Pamphile family is displayed in 12 lavishly decorated rooms arranged around the internal courtyard on the Piano Nobile of the palace. Some of my favorite spaces included the ballroom, which used to be called the music room, made up of two connecting spaces. Amongst the objects worth noting in the orchestra stall are a 1767 birdcage, an 18th century harp, and two antique livers. The hollow mirrors, designed by Gabriele Valvasori in 1730, with its gold frame Venetian mirrors and antique statues, will leave you speechless. The frescoes on the vaulted ceiling were painted between 1731 and 1734 and the subject, the labors of Hercules, was imaginatively connected with the Pamphili family tree, which supposedly could be traced back to a nephew of the Greek hero. The Aldobrandini room, also known as the most beautiful painted room, is filled with fragments of frescoes dating back to 1507. In the center of the room, there is a large marble sculpture of center from the Antonine era, and along the walls are a series of ancient sculptures, including a number of remarkable sarcophagi. Look at this room. It is treasure upon treasure, and once again, I am the only one here. How is this possible? You have to be here. Among numerous masterpieces of the gallery, you will find the entire room dedicated to stunning canvases by Jan Caravaggio, like his penitent Magdalene and the rest on the flight into Egypt. If you are traveling to Rome for more than a couple of days, or this is not your first time in Rome, Doria Pamphile Gallery is one of the places in Rome I strongly recommend exploring. The next hidden gem of Rome that I would love to introduce you to is the National Etruscan Museum of Villa Giulia. It's considered one of the most important museums for the preservation of the Etruscan history and focuses on the archaeological finds around Rome. The National Etruscan Museum is housed in Villa Giulia, 
a magnificent Renaissance villa surrounded by a lavish garden with terraces connected by spectacular stairways and fountains. A local recommended me this place a few months ago and said, Anastasia, you have to show this place. You have to share it with the world because it is truly one of the most beautiful museums we have. So here we are. The Etruscans can be considered the first Romans, and nowadays the area corresponding to their former geographical location extends all the way to Tuscany. Due to the lack of texts found about Etruscan people, there is still so much we don't know about them. Therefore, a museum dedicated to the preservation of this civilization is of great importance. All the works in the museum provide a detailed story of the evolution of the Etruscan culture through various periods of time. From the first bronze objects of Villanova phase with its simple agrarian culture, to the advanced one, where trade with other parts of the world became essential, leading to the Etruscans starting to appreciate luxury items, such as silver vases, perfumes, ivory objects, and even makeup found in the tombs of the new elite. A great example of the new phase can be seen in paintings that show animals not common to Italy, such as elephants and leopards, showing a contact with other parts of the world. The following period archaic is illustrated with works such as bronze candelabra with figures, jewelry items, and my favorite, the sarcophagus of the spouses. It perfectly represents the Etruscan culture during that period, showing a couple sharing a banquet couch in a perfect balance and equality between men and women. The archaic period is followed by the classic one, with ceramics and funerary pieces with mythological scenes, as well as the final phase, the decline, illustrated by items that show the gradual absorption of the Etruscan culture by the Roman one. Get ready, there is so much to see here. Just so you know, the ticket is only 10 euros, guys. 10 euros and you get pretty much the entire space to yourself. There are so many different rooms to explore. Guys, it's incredible. This museum is a definite must. In my opinion, if you're interested in learning about the origins of Rome, definitely add the National Etruscan Museum to your list of things to do in Rome. And if you're looking for something so unique to do in Rome that even most Romans never had a chance to do before, then I recommend that you schedule a visit to see the Mithrium of Palazzo Barberini. This is truly one of the most unique sites in Rome. This ancient underground temple to the god Mithras dates back to the 3rd century AD. It's located at the very end of the front yard of Palazzo Barberini, which is part of my Hidden Gems of Rome series, and was discovered by chance in 1936 and only open to the public in 2021. As soon as you walk in, you notice a well-preserved fresco of the ancient Roman god Mithras, which is considered one of the most beautiful ones in Rome. The mystery nature of this religion explains why Mithras was worshipped underground and why, to this day, we don't know much about it. According to the findings, Mithras was a god who was born from a rock with a knife and fiery torch. He is usually represented as a young man killing the bull. The scene is completed by the presence of a scorpion, a snake and two figures, each bearing a torch. The religious ceremonies took the form of a ritual banquet, with only the highest members of the religion being allowed to participate. During your visit, you will see the central part of the temple with an altar, a spectacular fresco, as well as a fountain for water and the tables where the food would have been served. If you are a lover of ancient history, religion and art, Visiting this Rome attraction should definitely be on your list of top things to do in Rome. 
All right, fabulous people, this is it. Thank you so much for watching my Hidden Gems of Rome part three. Now, if you haven't seen my part one and part two, I strongly recommend to do so, and I will make sure to link it in the description down below. Now, wait, before you go, please remember to smack that like button. And if you're new to my channel and my vibe, and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, I invite you to subscribe and I truly hope to see you all in the next video. The biggest kiss from chaotic, incredible, amazing Rome.